<sighs> all right, all right. I'm here. I'm awake. I've got my tea. We're underwater. How's it staying in that cup? Cartoon magic. Let's talk Star Trek Picard Season 2, Episode 1, The Stargazer. But before I get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Let's talk initial spoiler-free impressions. They've changed the theme music. It's retained the few melodies I recall, but gives them a dark twist, reminiscent of that Mirror Universe two-parter from Enterprise. Still not the bombastic motifs I prefer, but given where I think the show is going this season, feels very apropos. The first season of Picard had a very dismal view of the late 24th Century Federation and all the broken people it left in its wake, and I think the writers realized that in so doing, they were harming Roddenberry's legacy of the idyllic future of humanity. So this time around, it looks like the Federation and Starfleet are hunky-dory, and the threats are once again to come from without. Now, I say poppycock. Bettering oneself isn't an unlockable achievement, it's a process. Lower Decks talked about how you can't actually solve systemic issues with an impassioned speech, and TNG got immensely better as a show once the edict of no interpersonal conflict got chucked out. I'm of course happy to see growth, and it seems like they've put all our characters in a better spot than they were last season. I'll talk about my issues with specific character choices once we get into spoilers, but I don't think it's a spoiler to say that Guinan is in this episode. I must confess, I've been worried. It's been 20 years since Goldberg last played Guinan, and I didn't see the character in the trailer. I saw Whoopi. Her writing is top-notch. The words that come out of her mouth are the same pearls of wisdom she has always given. But Guinan is over five centuries old. Her personality should be cemented. She should feel the same now as she did 30 years ago. And unfortunately, I think Whoopi is playing her a little too relaxed. They also threw in a wholly unnecessary bit of dialogue acknowledging that Whoopi has aged like a human being. We all know she has. It's fine. Nobody complained when Spock aged worse than Kirk. Drawing attention to it and coming up with a half-baked explanation that Elorians can control the rate of aging just makes it silly. What if Spock aged like that because he's half-human? So he ages like a human for 60 years and then presses pause for a century? Uh, the harder you try to explain that stuff, the sillier it gets. Overall, I found the episode very engaging, and it feels like they might actually have a good show here. But whether they've resolved pacing issues remains to be seen. With that said, let's now move into spoilers. Jaban has died off screen, and Laris is now indicating that she's romantically interested in Jean-Luc. He's torn. He's always shied away from committed romances, and Guinan tells him over a bottle of Saurian brandy that it's one of the few places he's feared to tread. He'll risk his bones, but not his heart. Also, Guinan's bar is in Los Angeles. I thought Janeway said that city sank into the Pacific. Seemed like a silly thing to assert. I'm happy to ignore it if they are. By the way, Orla Brady is a phenomenal actor, and she sells her love for Picard in a single scene, so much that I am begging the showrunners to let it happen. Even if it doesn't feel like Patrick Stewart has the same chemistry for her, she could carry the entire romance on her back. Seems like basically every other character has either joined or rejoined Starfleet. Rios is captain of the Stargazer. It's not the same ship as Picard's, but it is the namesake, replete with extra nacelles. Not sure why it doesn't have the A designation, though. Agnes is serving as a scientific attaché on the ship, though it sounds like she and Chris had a rough breakup. And by the way, Agnes is still just the worst. She spends half the episode arrogantly drunk and practically flaunts that she got acquitted of the murder charge. Rafi's XO of the Excelsior, and Elnor is an Academy cadet assigned to her ship. That one bugs me. Not everyone is supposed to become a Starfleet officer. It's cool that he's the first full Romulan to join, at least that isn't a Tal Shiar mold, but why? Jake Sisko taught us there's more than one career in the future. It feels like they did it just to figure out a way to keep him in the show. To which I say, have him pal around with Seven? She's still a Fenris Ranger and is now in command of La Serena. She also fixed the issue of too many holograms with identical faces, as she merged them all into a single one named Emmett, who has long hair and speaks only Spanish. The one issue she hasn't fixed yet is her relationship with Rafi is still off screen. 
Picard and Rafi talk about it briefly, but they still don't share words with each other. I'd love to listen to No Man's Land, but unfortunately, I don't have an extra $20 to get this relationship DLC. You can fix that by subscribing to my Patreon. Soji is serving as an ambassador of her people, and we only see her briefly making contact with the Deltons, you know, the sexy bald people from the slow motion picture. I assume we'll get more of her next episode, but for now she's Miss also appearing in this episode. A rift in space-time appears near Seven's ship, and the Stargazer arrives to investigate. It is sending a message requesting Federation membership, beginning with, Help us, Picard. So, they fetch Picard from his current job as Chancellor of Starfleet Academy and quickly find out that the rift was created by the Borg. The Queen beams aboard the ship, still begging for Federation assistance, but she starts assimilating the ship and using its Borg enhancements to gain control of the entire fleet. Interestingly, when they shoot at her, she returns fire but only to stun, which suggests she may in fact be sincere about the dire straits of the Borg and their desire to join. Picard orders the ship's self-destruct to prevent her from gaining control of the fleet, and it actually explodes. But Picard wakes up at his vineyard, discovering that everything is wrong. Laris is not here. The artifacts in his home seem more militaristic. He has an android butler. And Q arrives. It appears the timeline has changed and he's got his hand in it. They do the digital de-aging on him for the five seconds the budget allows, long enough for him to mock Picard's age. And while acknowledging Whoopi's age was annoying, this one is perfectly in keeping with Q's humor and I'm happy for it. He reminds Picard that the trial never ended and the episode concludes. So where do you think the series will go from here? Leave a comment below. The Borg instigating a time travel plot to the 21st century? Feels like it's 1996 again. We'll soon see. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share the video with your friends. Subscribe to my Patreon to get shouted out in future videos. Check out my Bandcamp for banging tunes, including all the tracks you heard in this video. Follow me on Twitter at GayestFesh, and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Rest of Both Worlds, where I go through Star Trek The Next Generation with a friend who's never seen it. Thanks to my patrons Piftel Cakes and Renee Vorbeck. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you all in the next video.